Welcome to the Living the Dream Podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. achieve, achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. And tonight we're going to be talking about overcoming challenges as I am joined by best-selling author, international actor, and speaker, Andrew Mondia. Andrew has helped people all around the world through all walks of life live a more passionate life by talking about overcoming his challenges, which include childhood trauma, bully, and abuse, and even an attempted suicide. So we're going to be talking to him about what he's doing and also about his work with award-winning authors and actors and different kind of people. So, Andrew, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Curtis, for having me on the show. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm currently based in Toronto, Ontario, working on my acting and moving forward. I'm just uh, at the tail end of recovering from a car accident that I was in a year and a half ago. And it's been very interesting journey with just studying more about myself and, um, you know, owning who I am. Well, you've also, and I, and I'm glad that you are doing okay after your accident, but you've also overcome lots of challenges in your life. Can you tell us about some of those challenges and what they were like and how you overcame them? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, I'll start with my childhood. I I'm born and I was born and raised in British Columbia lived in Vancouver, Victoria. I was, I, for the longest I can remember since I was like, I guess since I was three years old, <laughs> I don't know how back we can re- actually remember, but as far back as you can remember, I wore in glasses. Uh, I was the, you know, I was the Canadian version of Steve Urkel, you could say. Um, it was just very challenging for me wearing glasses. And because there was no understanding when I was growing up, kids didn't understand that it was a way of life. I used to get teased a lot, uh, bullied, uh, as well as my home life uh, at some point became very toxic to me. And when I was 13 years old, which is, well, anyways, I was 13 years old when I survived suicide. Tell us about that that suicide and and how you survived it and and just kind of give us as much detail about it as you would like to. Um, well, I, I was feeling really low when the day that, um, I, I attempted, I don't think I, you know, it was only recently, like since like 2015, when I started to write up my one man show that, uh, I was coming to terms with what happened. And, you know, I was becoming more at peace, Uh, but I can remember exactly what happened. Uh, You know, kids, you know, growing up, they, you know, they sort of was, were bugging me, so to speak. I mean, they weren't, but I was just, you know, I was a loner in in school. I didn't think I had much friends, Uh, although later in life, I realized I do have, I do have friends because I'm connected to them on Facebook, you know, the joy of social media. But uh, back then, I just, you know, I kept to myself because of, you know, my interests were were different. I was, you know, I've always been into the arts and entertainment industry. And it was uh, the day that it was happening, going back to the story, because I have a tendency to go off track. So, (laughs) but I, um, you know, kids were, it was near close to the end of lunchtime when kids came up to me. Uh, like there was a few of them they like sort of circled around me and they were I don't remember what exactly they were asking me but it just got to a point where I just lost it Uh, they did not respect my space and uh, I used to have a really bad temper at that time and I it's something just lit and I just blew up in, uh, in the classroom I did something uh, uh, and I was embarrassed by what I did and I, I left the room and later that day, um, 
I was, you know, uh, a lot of thoughts were going through my mind. I was really low. My mother was not at home. She went to this meditation class. My dad, he, uh, growing up, my dad was an alcoholic and he was verbally abusive as well as to me, there was some physical, a little physical abuse that happened. And I just felt like I didn't want to live anymore. And so I decided to take this duvet that was on my bed. I brought it outside, went to the the shed where my dad had his can of gasoline and um, uh, doused uh, the duvet in, in gasoline and went down like where, where I was living was on a two acre uh, piece of land uh, just outside of Sydney, BC in North Saanich. And so there was like no one really around to see this happening. And I went to the field down below, I laid out the blanket and I lit it and I just, um, I just stared and something just inside me something something gave me the fright to stop me from doing it and then when i look back at it i realize well that wouldn't have been enough to actually fully do it anyway so but i'm i'm very grateful that i was frightened into not doing it well let's talk about all the things that that you're doing with telling your story to other people and helping hundreds of people around the world through your stories well, I got into the thing is, is before we get to that little bit, uh, there is one other little detail I'm going to, I'm going to mention that will help with my, my inspiration as well. Um, because growing up, I didn't know who I was. I was not comfortable in my own skin and it took quite a while after I left school to really be comfortable. And in 2004, I had another little breakdown, so to speak, and I came to terms with my own sexuality of being gay. And since then, um, I've been doing my own, like working in personal development. And with what I've learned in personal development, I even became a passion test facilitator where I help people to define and get clear to where their top five passions are, because, you know, it's important that we understand, we are clear with what it is we love to do, because if you don't like what you're doing, then what's the point in doing something you don't like? It's important that we do what, what we are passionate about and work towards getting to that point into where we want to go. And so I've been helping people find their passions. And I've been inspiring with my story and my journey because I've lived and traveled around the world. I left, I left Vancouver, uh, where I was living when I came out in 2006, moved to London, England, and lived there for like seven years. I did not even have that much money to survive in England. But fortunately, because I'm Canadian Swiss, dual nationality, I was able to live and work in England. And some people, they thought, oh, I'll just come back to Vancouver in, in a few months' time. It's just a phase, but I was there for seven years and my lit just like, as someone says, someone told me you're glowing. And so, and through my actions, I've inspired people in my life, in my encounters. I like to see people happy. I'd rather they be happy. And if I can make them laugh, I'll make them laugh. Even just like a person on the street. Uh, if I can make them laugh, that's what, what I'll do. Well, let's talk about what in inspired you or maybe the people that inspired you to start writing, acting, and speaking. Who are your influences? Well, a few months after I tried, I attempted suicide, my grandfather had passed away and he was a really great inspiration for me. And he was the catalyst, his passing was the catalyst. And I was in grade eight at the time. It was my first week in school. I remember quite vividly. Um, I just, you know, all of a sudden I just decided this is what I want to do, becoming a, I want to pursue a career in entertainment because I'd been doing it for a few years. I mainly did it for fun because I enjoyed it. And it was just something, you know, I just loved 
performing. It was something that I just resonated with. Um, I started off in theater, singing, dancing, and, and like choirs, and, and I did musicals. And then when my voice changed, I started to work, go get into film and TV, and I've done background work. And most of my stuff right now has been background work, but I've had successes where I've worked uh, uh, doing independent films. Um, and with regards to the speaking, uh, it's more of just, you know, because I'm an actor, uh, I like to, I mean, it's speaking is just more of a recent thing, uh, telling my story. Um, I even wrote my own one-man show, which I debuted and performed in Orlando, the first version. It's in the works of rewriting, and uh, and then that's a bit of the journey. Uh, it's, you know, I've listened to so many people, like a, a Christ, uh, there's a there's Christopher Howard. He's T.R. Vackard. Uh, I've even met, gotten to listen to Bill Clinton, and I've met. I've met uh, Richard Branson at a book signing when I lived in London. And, uh, you know, when I lived in London, I got to hear and listen to so many amazing speakers who were very inspiring. And, um, and my biggest one is the lady who created the Passion Test, Janet Bray Atwood. Um, she's just such an amazing woman who's inspired me. She's full of love. She's full of just joy to just be around. And I think it's important when you get inspired to be ignited. I mean, because when something inspires you, take that by the horn and just use that energy and, and start going for it. Because if, if we don't go for what we love, then it's going to just... Uh, you know, be something that we will wonder, well, why didn't I do that? Well, tell us about some of the films and some of the award-winning actors that you've had the privilege to work with, and also tell us about your one-man show. Okay. Um, well, I, you know, most of the award winners have been through when I've done background work, background work, but I, I worked with, like, I got to be on, I was on set with Judy Dench, uh, and she's such a, a lovely lady. And it's just, it's just amazing. I mean, I was working on the film Philomena. I also was a part of the London 2012 Olympic opening ceremonies. Uh, and I got to work with, uh, and I was, uh, and Danny Boyle was the artistic director. And I got, I got a chance to a few times to connect with him and, and talk with him even at the media event and there was Stephen Redding. It's just, you know, um, and I've done some other work outside of film and TV where there's been authors I've helped to promote their books. Um, and they've, you know, they've, they've done really well with getting their, their books launched. And so it's just, you know, and with regards to my one man show, it's just my life story about uh, my attempt at suicide overcome i put it into like a, a poem format i talked about you know discovering what it is i love to do and uh about my own coming into my own shell when it comes to finding love well tell us about your books tell us where we can find them and what readers can expect when they read them actually okay the books are journals i was a part of a, a compilation um so they're not like it's i mean they became their best sellers but i was just one of many like authors that contributed uh, just to be clear on, on that 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 aspect uh it's they're just like i just submitted a, a short write-up inspiring for that particular day and and it was two different journals that that i was a part of Do you have any current or upcoming projects that you're working on that people need to know about? Um, right now, no. I just, you know, for me, I just want to tell my story, uh, inspire people. And, you know, you know, once things are challenging, there is a light at the end of the, the tunnel. My most recent person that I've been listening to is Dee Wallace. 
and her radio show conscious i mean d wallace uh and she's she's well known for the movie et she she also has a healing community and and i've just been you know moving forward and i'm even in the process of working on another one man show where it is character driven uh, inspired by lily tomlin go ahead and throw out your contact information any website social media links so people can stay connected with you and see everything that you're up to on social media it's at andrew mondia and that's my last name spelt m-o-n-d-i-a and so uh, i'm on facebook i'm on twitter instagram well twitter is not so much but instagram and facebook are the big places and also i'm on linkedin okay close us out with some final thoughts maybe something that i didn't touch on that you would like to talk about or just any final thoughts for the listeners well go on an adventure you know i i've lived and traveled around the world um if we don't go if we don't take a step outside our own comfort zone to explore something more than what we're used to we're just going to be stuck in the same pattern even if it's just something small do something in the unknown because the more you step into the unknown the more life will be an, an adventurous i mean and i and i know from experience because when I left London, I, I moved to Switzerland. I took a chance when I left Switzerland. I did not know where I was going to be when I moved over to Switzerland. Uh, and then the opportunity arose for me to um, live in China and teach English. And I taught English for 10 months in, in China. And I just, you know, I took the experiences along my way to uh, just move forward. And uh, I been learning every day to to trust my own intuition. We all have intuition. We all have that gut feeling as to to what is right and what is wrong. And it's important that we learn to trust more in that in where we want to go. Because if we don't if we don't listen to that, we can fall prey to the ego. And sometimes the ego is not quite accurate. I mean, I know that from romance experience being scammed. So uh, it's just very, or, or like situ- situations can lead you in paths that you did not expect to be on as a result of not listening. And it's also a protective instinct. The more we trust our intuition, the more we'll be in tune with where we want to go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Andrew Mondia. Be sure to follow him on social media and keep up with everything that he's up to. Also, please be sure to follow, rate, review, share this episode to as many people as possible because we all are facing challenges and Andrew is a great speaker and a great person to listen to to help overcome them. Android listeners, go to the Google Play Store and download the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast app. Andrew, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you very much. And everyone, go live your dream. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream. Dream.